this might actually be one of the best opportunities to go and see Lake O'Hara without throngs of people. So I hope you're uh, ready for a 22k round trip hike. I didn't think it was that long. Yeah, you better prepare your uh, scintillating conversation because we're going to be in a tunnel of trees. It's going to be quite, quite a boring hike, I think. Oh, I know what we can talk about. What? Your wedding. There's, there's no wedding. Yeah, there is. No, we're not getting married. Here we are. Well, probably not today, but pretty soon, I think. Well, I haven't even proposed, so it's not happening, obviously. Well, of course you have, like several times. <laughs> I've not once proposed. What are you, you're dreaming, mate? Have they all been dreams? It doesn't matter. It's happening. It, it, it just isn't, though. It is, though. But it just isn't. But it is. <laughs> It simply isn't. Oh, but it is. It's not. It is. It just isn't. Come on, we already sound like we married. We might as well just do it. You're just, you're just making stuff up in your head. Why? It's not healthy. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, how are you liking my truck? Yeah, it's. I, I do actually really like your truck. It's quite nice. And the camper? Yeah, I mean. Can't deny that your camper has become uh, integral to my photography experience, I must say. Yeah. Yeah, we got lots to talk about. You can clearly see that Amanda can barely contain her excitement about this super long hike. Never let it be said that I don't know how to spoil a girl. So we began our long climb up the hill, singing songs for the bears and enjoying that glorious mountain air. But I have to confess that I hadn't been entirely honest about the total distance of the hike. So we've just hit the 10 kilometer marker on our way up to Lake O'Hara. We did actually get uh, told by the warden that we shouldn't be camping overnight, which we have no intention of doing. This is just an in and out day hike, but everyone keeps looking at us as if we're crazy. 22K hike, just for a day hike, but we're in, we're in training for our Tonquin Valley hike, so it doesn't seem that crazy, but 10K, one more kilometer to go, and then, we can start hiking. No. Yeah, this, this, this is it. This is the hike to the trailhead. You're kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. Let's go. Ah, so this is what all the fuss is about, eh? As soon as we arrived at that beautiful lakeshore, well, I was tempted to stay right there. So we've made it up to Lake O'Hara, and I'll be honest, it was worth every step. At 11k, totally worth hiking all the way up here. And I guess I can see now why uh, the powers that be make it a little bit difficult to get in here, because otherwise it would just be packed. It would be another Lake Louise, and relatively speaking, it's, it's quiet. I mean, this is larch season where, you know, most people want to be here and it's actually pretty quiet. I'm the only photographer on this beach, so that'll do for me. Within seconds of arriving, I found a very obvious, but completely irresistible composition. I don't think I've ever seen that many shots of this particular spot. There must be thousands, but I don't remember seeing one. So I'm going to rinse it for all it's worth. So I used the rule of thirds grid there to get that peak perfectly in the center. And then I didn't want it so obvious because I, like I said, it's a fairly obvious composition. So I deliberately nudged it ever so slightly off center. So it's just not so anal, shall we say. So what I've got is this lovely peak reflected and then Obviously for me, I'm totally excited about all of these surrounding elements or supporting elements that I can place around this lovely mountain peak and that reflection. So one of the things that I talk about in my Composition Made Easy course, chapter two, called Tricks of the Trade, is I talk about subject separation. And this is a perfect example of it right here. So you can see this reflection of the mountain peak 
that's a very very important subject well the mountain is the main subject and so to me the reflection of that peak is just as important i don't want it to get interrupted i want everything to be harmonious i don't want subjects fighting for space so as beautiful as these rocks are this one and this one they are supporting elements i do not want those shapes interrupting this beautiful reflection i like that it's kind of interrupting it there that's that's just okay and in fact i think it's a little bit more interesting that it's interrupting it slightly but on the main peak of that reflection i don't want anything chipping into that space like i said everything's got to be in harmony with one another and you can do that just by placing yourself in such a way that all of these things all of these elements just sit right where they need to be so technically speaking what i've got going on with this shot is i focused on the mountain peak there and i'll bracket that shot i'll probably do two exposures one bright one dark then i'll brighten things up probably overexpose it ever so slightly and i'll change my focus point to this rock here and i'll focus on that probably won't bracket that and this is something that i often do when i when i focus stack depending on what's going on in the scene I often don't bother to bracket that focus stacked image because all that I actually end up using from that frame is just like that area of where that rock is or you know one of the logs on either side so we'll see what goes on with this shot and then in about 40 minutes you think 40 minutes if I don't get this shot then we'll move on go a little bit higher what's that you want to go hiking a bit more no yeah okay oh that was easy So even with this test shot in bad light, I could see there was a lot of potential with this composition. And I just needed to come back later with some better light and some dramatic clouds. Now let me tell you something about Amanda. She keeps warm by drinking hot tea. <laughs> there you go. But then crack, just crank the lever all the way to the left so it's maximum blowage. Wow. Yeah. And then it just boils. Whereas I like to keep warm by busting out some exquisite dance moves. <laughs> now that's poetry in motion. Oh, I'm dizzy. Now in this video, seeing as it's almost Christmas, I thought I'd give you guys a free preview of chapter three, form and flow on sale right now. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to explain to you my thought process when it comes to how I use leading lines in my compositions. And typically when you think of leading lines, you think of super wide angle lenses. And that is definitely where you'll see it used most, but you can use leading lines in any type of composition. But I'm going to show you how I typically do it with super wide angle lenses and actually almost force a shape into a leading line. A few very easy examples of a good quality leading line would be, let's say, a road or a trail or even a train track. Something quite obvious. It could even be a river that snakes through a valley. Those are the obvious ones that as you arrive at a scene, you immediately look at it and think, ah, that's my leading line. But often you'll come to a place like this where you almost have to make your own. So let me show you what I'm doing with this rock that I found in the foreground here, which at first glance doesn't look like it could really work as a leading line. But when you get really close and you magnify and use the, the lens distortion to almost force that shape into a leading line, it really makes that composition come to life. It pulls you into the center of the composition and really grabs your attention. So there's this rock that's got me so very interested. And if you look at it with the Osmo, which kind of mimics what you would see with, you know, the standard human eye, you can see that it certainly doesn't look at first glance to be a leading line. It's just a rock. But what really interested me was these cracks that you can see. So as I get closer, just look at the shape of these cracks. They're very, very interesting. There's a lot of impact there. And of course, those cracks and, and this lovely curve that's on the edge of the rock there, those point into the scene where the mountain is and that reflection. So what I've got going on with this shot, man, the light is, the light is absolutely fantastic right now. I wish I was actually shooting it, but anyway, let me get you this tutorial done. So now that I've got really low to the ground, I would say two and a half, maybe three feet from the ground and very, very close to this rock that I just showed you. The shape is completely transformed. So if you look from the left of the frame, in fact, let me just open up the aperture a little bit, make it brighter. From the left of the frame, you see how the rock curves 
in to the center of the frame and the rock almost has two parts you've got this lovely cracked section here there's so much detail and texture in that i love it and that's doing the same thing it's pointing into the center of the frame and those work really well but in addition to that they're counterbalanced on the other side of the frame with this log here which you can't see the back of my camera right now because i'm having to to film in this bright sunlight but in my rule of thirds grid my diagonal that goes all the way across the frame is perfectly lined up with that log there so now so now i've got two leading lines which really didn't exist when i was even in the same spot but standing or even low down but further back they didn't exist they didn't fall on those lines so it's using proximity and magnification and that lens distortion that's created those beautiful curving shapes that absolutely suck your eye into this scene and when you look at the two together it's almost like an x shape so if you look at these you've got these two coming in and then they cross and go out of the frame there which follow the mountain very very powerful I'm, I'm sorry i'm gonna have to take this shot the light is just fantastic right now as i mentioned there this is more of a forced leading line which is very easy to do especially with a super wide angle lens in fact the wider the lens the easier it is to force your foreground elements to become leading lines but with a wider lens you will sacrifice some of the impact of your distant elements such as the mountains unless they're massive like these what are you doing <laughs> what, what are you doing oh no you're not thank god you didn't find the chocolate no, no, no. I don't. Uh, I don't do chocolate anymore. I'm a good boy. Yeah, I don't really do it either. No, no. Yeah. You know, this would be a really pretty place to get married. Oh, look at the light! Look. So sharp. I love a bit of crispiness. So crispy. You're recording. <laughs> What's that? Pretty sharp. I'm actually kind of scared of you Pretty right sharp, now. <laughs> oh, God, it's f***ing crispy, that is. <laughs> crispy. Oh, God, I can't... Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do myself. Oh, it's bloody gorgeous, that is. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll be completely honest with you. It, it doesn't really make much sense for me to say this because I'm always trying to sell people my uh, my courses in composition. But the truth is, I mean, all of that stuff is essential. It's really important. It's going to help you in a place like this. But there are times and there are places where the scenery is just so spectacular and the light is just so good that really all you've got to do is just turn up. And if you know how to focus a camera and get your settings basically correct, you're going to get a killer shot. I don't know why I just told you that. The light was changing rapidly, and I had a feeling that something very special was about to happen. So after much experimentation, I'm back at the very same place that I started, and the light is just, it's just sublime right now. It's impossible to take a bad shot, really. The only thing I could mess up is focus, that's it. And I've gone for a similar composition to what I was going for earlier, and it, it probably works even better now with this light. So that main peak that you could see in the distance there, right now it's it's in shade, it's in, it's in the shadow of these mountains over here. And so it's not catching that glow, but look at the mountains behind it and that wispy cloud on the top of that one. It's just, it's absolute magnifique. And basically what I'm doing is I'm continuing to shoot until, and you can see it happening right now, until the light hits that central peak as well and then the shot really comes to life because the reflection starts to pop as well and it's it's just happening as as i speak so as you can see it's pretty much the same composition that i had earlier i've got this beautiful rock off to the right i've got this rock here and i've made sure that it's not interrupting that gorgeous reflexion and the light that's hitting these peaks right now is just absolutely 
Well, let's be honest, I'm having full-blown photogasms. And just like before, what I'm doing is a two-shot focus stack. So I focused on the mountain peak over there for that background shot. And then once I've finished with all of these frames that have these beautiful light positions, then I'll focus on that rock there and take a shot for that. But I mean, this is just, I, I can't believe I've got so lucky for my first time here. Absolutely, it's just tremendous. Well, the clouds were performing a magical ballet, but would I ever get any glorious light on those mountain peaks? I think you know. It was such a sweet joy to have all of that work pay off. And when I look at this image, I reckon I made the right choice to stay put. But who knows, maybe there was a better shot further up the hill. But then that just gives me another reason to go back and find out. Oh, by the way, uh, we did film a very serious and emotional goodbye clip but the microphone broke, so you'll just have to imagine our serious and earnest professionalism. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm Gavin Hardcastle. Bye bye.